We're getting ready to process wood, but this time is different. What we're going to be doing is making the last tongue and groove boards for our bedroom renovation. This is a big day coming because we've been working on this project for weeks, even months, processing, creating tongue and groove boards, staining, sealing, installing, repeat. This is the last batch. The room will be done. So we're going to get working. Get these boards done, get them stained. Looking forward to seeing some progress and finishing up that bedroom. We just finished up processing all the boards that we need to finish this room and now I'm ready to start staining the first board. We're on the last board of the last of the last to get this room done. And we're making quick progress. So after I'm done with this, we let them dry. Then we'll come back, get the varnish on them. I don't think we'll be installing today, but tomorrow maybe. Definitely. And then you guys won't have too much more wood to watch. You'll be able to take a break from the wood milling. That's it. We are done. Believe it or not, we already got two coats of clear varnish on those boards. They're drying and we're going to be getting them installed soon. In the meantime, I'm going to do a little bit of trim work. So this will make sense in a moment, but I'm just cutting down some thin strips of wood and some of this egg and dart trim. Then I'll bring you in, show you where it's going to go. So what I'm doing is actually fancying up this mystery unit, which is a dehumidifier for the master bedroom. I want it to look a little nicer before we do finishing work on this plywood. So I'm going to case it out. And it should look nice when I'm done. That's the first layer of trim done. Now we have to do the second layer of trim. Last piece. Now 
This separated shrunk over time, not a big deal. When I attached this, I left this just proud. You can see how this trim sticks up a hair past this one. I'm gonna sand it down so that they're all flush. Looks like one piece. I'm glad those are finally done. After months of waiting, we finally got those panels stained. We've had some questions about them lately, asking what they were and why they're there. We decided to put panels here for a couple reasons. First, we decided to go a little unconventional and do a built-in dehumidifier. And it works just like a portable one, except there's a hose drain that goes from the unit down the wall all the way into the crawl space where we'll be having it go outside the house. So it never has to be emptied, but otherwise it works the same. It keeps the air at a certain humidity level. We're not big fans of using air conditioning and in the times when we don't want AC, but we want to bring down that humidity, this will help a lot. It'll keep our house from getting moldy in the high humid summer. It'll help us feel more comfortable and it's actually a lot cheaper to run than an AC unit. So built-in dehumidifier, after we're done clear coating this wall, we're gonna put the cover on, you guys can see it complete, but that's what that is. And so since we were doing this built-in dehumidifier, I wanted to make it easy to access if I needed to or change things out. And I just thought the panel was the easiest way to work it. It was just a simple plywood panel that could be taken off or changed or whatever. The other reason is because I, I wanted our room to be kind of seam free. All of our tongue and groove boards are full length from corner to corner. We like how that looks. And this is a 24 foot bedroom. So I didn't want a bunch of staggered joints in the middle. So what we did was put the panel here. We're going to trim it out. It's going to look pretty and we won't have any noticeable wall seams. So it's mostly for looks and a little bit just to make that, that unit more functional. Now over here, we don't have a good excuse other than again, breaking the room into two halves so that we can bring our tongue and groove boards up to it. And we plan on hanging an art piece in the middle above the door and I think it's gonna look really cool. And if you're wondering why I put the dehumidifier so high up above the door and in kind of awkward space, it's literally the only spot I could find for it. It's not the most convenient spot, but it'll help circulate the air, dehumidify this warm humid air that rises and we just didn't want to take up wall space with it because we have so much stuff our bed and our desks and our closet and everything that we want to put in here i couldn't find a good spot so we stuck it above the door if it doesn't work out we don't like it we change systems it's an easy spot to kind of ignore or patch up while the panels are drying i'm going to get working on the wood let's get this bedroom done once and for all
I'm still making progress on this wall, almost about to finish, but I wanted to show you guys a little tip, and that is, when you're going up against a ceiling, and it doesn't matter if it's straight or if it's angle, if you're touching a ceiling, it can be hard to get your boards in tightly because of the way the tongue and groove interact. So, what I like to do is make a bevel on the edge that touches the ceiling. So you can see that little bevel right there. It doesn't take much. I just back cut it and I bevel the back corner. If you take the back corner off the board, you can put it on the groove and roll it in. Really easy. If you leave your board straight, you'll never get it tight to your ceiling. You'll never get it in there. That little bit makes all the difference. That's how I get my tight, clean edges along my ceiling, is by back beveling the board. Well, here's a big progress update. We just finished this side of the bedroom. Completely done. The walls are up. The panel is painted pink. It'll look better once we get it trimmed out the way it's supposed to be. It's gonna look really cool, actually. Now we have to do this side. It's gonna go quick. We know what we're doing. Let's get it done. After that's done, just a couple more boards right over here on this wall, and the bedroom walls are finished, and you guys can take a break, and we can take a break from Tongue Groove Boards. We'll get on other projects. I wanted to capture your enthusiasm. Hello. The room is... Done. 100%. Almost. There's a piece there we missed. We'll be back soon. <laughs> now the room is done. I wish I could capture this whole space in one shot for you guys, but it looks great. The wood is fully up on the walls. We are done with tongue and grooves. We did the bathroom, we did the hallway, we did the bedroom. All the ceilings, all the walls. It's been a big job. I'm so glad it's over with. We can take a break from it, focus on some other big jobs that need to get done. I am so happy with how it turned out. We like the color. Uh, we still have a lot of trim work to do. That's gonna be next. We're gonna case out the beams with trim. We're gonna do window trim, door trim. Well, maybe not door trim yet. We gotta think about floors first. Uh, just get as much done as we can. Now that this wood project is out of the way, I wanna cover some things that I didn't mention while I was installing this wood. The first thing I wanted to mention is that all of these boards are nailed in with galvanized finished nails. Now, when you go to the store, you have a choice between bright finish or galvanized finish. We chose to spend just a couple dollars more, which doesn't add up to much, to buy the galvanized nails to make sure they would last a very long time without rusting. Even though these are inside and not subject to getting wet, I thought it was worth the extra precaution because we are in a humid environment and nails rust, so why not? So every nail in there is galvanized, the wood is finished with a solid wood stain, two coats of varnish on all throughout. Now I went through the whole master suite and I tried to calculate the amount of wood we used. Bathroom, entryway, and bedroom. I wanted to know how much wood did we process and finish and install in the master suite. Now this was a really hard thing to calculate because we obviously bought more wood than we used because a lot of places we had to buy 12 footers when the wall might have been close to 10 feet. You, you create a lot of waste that way. Um, I, so I didn't calculate that, but just what's on the wall that we processed and finished. The other thing that made it tricky was these angle, these slopes at the ceiling with our cathedral ceiling. I don't know, I just had a hard time getting accurate measurements. So this is just a rough estimate, but I calculated that we processed and installed 4,637 feet of board in that space. So I'm calculating feet by linear feet. So each board is uh, three and a half inches tall. It's a one by four. And I'm counting how many feet of board we've run through the machines and how much feet of board is on the wall. 4,637 feet. That would equal about 464 uh, 10 foot boards if they were all 10 feet long. Now we did buy 12 footers, we bought eight footers, we bought 14 footers, we bought a ton of 10 footers. So, you know, over 400 boards 
and over 4,000 feet of board in this space. The wood we're buying is it varies in price greatly, but let's calculate it at about a dollar per linear foot. So a dollar per foot of board. So you're looking at $4,637 for that space. That's a low end estimation because we bought more expensive wood for our bathroom. We bought slightly more expensive wood for our ceilings. So I would probably calculate it at five to five and a half thousand dollars more accurately to put tongue and groove boards throughout our master suite. That price is about 10 times the price of drywall, but it gives you a beautiful look and style that we are going for. Now, while we still have a lot of work to do in the master suite before we can move on to the rest of the house, I want to remind you guys that the rest of the house already has wood walls. That's what we were trying to match to in creating our own wood, was mimicking the wood in the rest of the house. So those walls will be reused. That means we don't actually have a lot of processing to do after this. We do have some small places to patch in. Uh, we closed off a doorway in the living room that'll have to have boards on it. But overall, we're almost done processing wood. That's a good feeling. And that cost, that wall cost, is limited to this part of the house. That is until we get to the back end. The back end will need walls, but that'll probably be several months away, if not more. So don't worry about that yet. I can't think of anything else to say. We're gonna get working on some other projects. The room is beautiful. We're happy with the color. We're happy with the style. And it feels good to feel like things are finally moving along. Now, before I go, I just wanted to address this dehumidifier one more time. I was hoping to put the cover on there so you guys could see it complete. Here's the cover. So you can see it's just a white cover. The reason I haven't put it on yet is because I'm not, I'm not really liking the white. It stands out too much. It's very bright up there. I'm considering painting this, spray painting it. So I'm gonna hold off on that until I decide what I wanna do with the finish. Um, white isn't bad. I know we have a white ceiling and we have a white fan and everything. I just don't know if I want a big white square on the wall. I'll think about that. But that is the cover to the dehumidifier. I'm looking forward to trying that out and seeing how it works. And the same thing here in our entryway, we have this white cover on our structured media panel. And I'm still trying to decide if I want that painted or not. I might end up painting both of those, so I don't know. I'm just trying to make a decision. I guess I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.